I feel the most feminine when I go out and I put together a great um, outfit and then I start to put up makeup and then do my hair and then go out and feeling like the most feminine I can be. I really love wearing jazz. Um, maybe feel I'm more sexy or hot and attractive. I perform femininity by wearing my hair long, by putting makeup on every day, by putting a skirt on. I think maybe I keep my hair long because that's what I feel like I'm told to do and the things I read, the things I watch, is that because I also think I should. But then it's got to the point now where if I didn't, it would feel like I was also performing and going out of my way to not. So I think there's a sort of paradox there now where I'm too far gone into the performance. I don't so much think that they're performances as much as they are um, just the way the specific person is. I would describe myself as far as the construct goes as being a very feminine person, but that's just my preferences and that's how it reflects from the social construct. So I think I don't perform in a feminine way or a masculine way, but particularly it's just the person I am. I think femininity is performed mainly through physicality. So being graceful and elegant, I think um, the moves that feminine people make are very informed. Um, they always sort of have a purpose. Um, when I used to live at home in Hungary, I used to be a part of a dance company. I could see that most of the girls, like, they just had something about their at attitude and how they had their faces that looked so feminine. And there was just a small act that they didn't even notice that they were doing. They were just being present on a stage in a way that they wanted to look pretty, but maybe they didn't know. I feel most feminine when I'm dancing, especially when I do ballet because I feel very graceful. I also feel particularly feminine when I'm smaller than someone. I think size for me is a massive indicator of femininity. Yes, you can be both masculine and feminine if you want to be. Yes, I think so. You can be both masculine and feminine. 100%, yeah, um, I think so. Yes, I think I could be both masculine and feminine. Um, sometimes I think I should be both. I think yes, you can be masculine and feminine at the same time and I admire those people so much. I see my body in Hollywood. I think the closest thing would be like one of the side characters in a teen drama might have my body, but I don't often see my body in Hollywood now. Obviously I'm a white, blonde, slim female but I found the figure of the Duff film which is like the designated ugly fat friend she was just like this normal girl with a slim figure she was calling herself ugly calling herself fat and I identified with her body because I thought it was kind of like just a normal body and so I found that a bit hard to deal with. So there is this one movie I remember watching it when I was like 12 or something it's a typical dancing movie, there are cheerleaders and the girl is put in a different school. And uh, what I really liked about her, that she was shorter, like she was extremely short. And she had like the typical short person body. And then I started to look for that body in other movies. I couldn't find it anywhere else and I was just kind of sad because there are so many different ways to be beautiful and I would like to see it represented. In Hollywood, I see two types of body. I see. Um, super thin girls and um, more plus size women often made these sort of comical characters because that sort of perception sells. Often in like comic sidekick kind of thing or like the best friend sort of thing. I do think there's a softer side to feminine than the strong resilient feminist type, but the strong resilient type it's not just a 1D personality. Yeah, I think they're both there, but they're also equal. I don't think that you have to necessarily be super strong and loud to be a feminist. I think often the strength comes from within. Yeah, I think uh, feminism might tend to be more soft. Yeah, I'm quite traditional, because I think women are more soft than most men. I don't think there's a hard and soft masculinity to the same distinction. There's a hard and soft femininity. I think 
that soft masculinity is often seen as femininity. Softer masculinity is possibly associated with femininity quite a lot, which is interesting because soft masculinity is probably seen as lesser, which then raises questions about femininity being lesser. I think femininity can be radical. I don't think it is by definition radical. Certainly historically it was radical, like with fighting for women's rights to vote and so on. I think nowadays it's starting to be seen as the norm, it's becoming less radical and being more accepted. I don't know that I'd describe it as radical, but I wouldn't say that it's not radical. I think choice of your femininity is radical. I don't know if it should be considered radical, it should be considered the expected, but I think Making the actual choice whether you ascribe femininity or go out of your way to not is radical, but also good. <laughs> I think uh, feminism should be a stronger thing when everyone finds their own values, but also respect the others. I think each person has masculine and feminine traits. It's not one or the other. And it's usually a blend of the two that make up who you are. And it's those different things that make up feminism. It's the inclusion of all different types. I think masculinity is sort of the ideal. As women, I think we're automatically seen as not being able to attain that ideal. So there's this other thing, femininity, that we are forced to be. <laughs> if we were all either masculine or feminine, those two overt terms, we were either one or the other wouldn't be any variety. <laughs> and there shouldn't be, in my opinion, as something like strong or soft masculinity because if you feel masculine in your kind of way, then that's masculinity for you. <laughs>